one thing that seems to be true is, at least from the animal literature, caloric restriction seems to reproducibly improve lifespan. And so, so let's, let's kind of talk about how that came to be as an understanding. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, this, um, this area of research is actually quite old. So that's a like hundred years. Yeah. Ago. The first experiments were published in the early to mid 1930s, right? Which means they were probably started in the 1920s, right? So almost a hundred years ago, people were going down this, this line of thinking of asking, you know, what is the effect of, um, significant restriction of calories on the aging process in mammals. So the early studies were all done in rats. And actually, if, if I remember correctly, these studies were originally designed from a developmental perspective. So they were really thinking about malnutrition um, and its effects on development. And as a byproduct, made the observation that yes, when you restrict calories in a, in a rat early on in life, they have a smaller body size. Um, uh, but then if you let them live out their entire lives, this is in the laboratory. And I think that's really important to keep in mind, you know, they live 40, 50% longer. So we're talking really significant increases in lifespan. And then the other thing that was appreciated pretty quickly was not only are they living longer, but they seem to be healthier as they're living longer. So, you know, this concept of health span and the period of life that is, you know, spent in good health, free from disease and disability it seemed as if caloric restriction was not only increasing lifespan, but, but also extending health span. So, you know, that led to uh, obviously a, a large body of literature since then studying the effect of caloric restriction in not just rodents, rats and mice, but also all sorts of simpler organisms, invertebrates like fruit flies and C. elegans and yeast. And the common theme seems to be that, again, starting from laboratory conditions, if you restrict nutrients by a whole variety of different, different methods, um, you can increase lifespan and apparently increase health span proportionally, at least proportionally. Um, so there's a lot of nuance there, a lot that we can dive into and to unpack. But I think that's generally the, the take home, right? Is that over and over and over again across, you know, these, the evolutionary distance we're talking about is much, much greater than the evolutionary distance between rodents and humans, right? So, so over a very wide evolutionary distance in pretty much every organism where it's ever been studied, you can find evidence that caloric restriction slows aging. Um, uh, again, there are, there are cases where that didn't happen, where lifespan wasn't extended, where lifespan was shortened. Maybe we want to talk about this at some point, the interaction between genetics and environment and caloric restriction. But in general, that is the, the, the take home message is caloric restriction can slow aging in laboratory animals pretty much everywhere where it's been studied. Um, the one, I think, question, question that some people have is whether that's true in non-human primates. And so there were, you, yeah. So I was just about to say, I was going to say before we get to NIA Wisconsin, yeah. which is perhaps the single greatest experiment that's ever been done to test this hypothesis, both in terms of its duration, level of control and proximity to our genome. Let's spend a moment on that. Before we do, any things that come up from the rodent studies that are worth talking about? So for example, <laughs> one of the things that I think is always important to point out is there's a very particular death that tends to fall on laboratory mice. They have, you know, if you look at the death bars for humans, there's much more heterogeneity. Yeah. But the leading cause is atherosclerosis. Now that's true in the United States. It's true across the globe. So yeah. when you mix in, develop and undeveloped, it doesn't matter. Laboratory mice aren't that way. Right. Well, they die of pretty much one thing and one thing alone. And that is... Actually, it's euthanasia, but I know where you're going. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Good uh, point. Yeah. <laughs> cancer, right? Yeah, so, cancer. Yeah. They all die of cancer. Right. So, so, so uh, certainly every uh, old mouse at time of death will, will have cancer. And again, th because of the way animal studies are done, usually um, you have defined endpoints where when a mouse reach that, reaches that endpoint, they have to be euthanized. But the, the expectation is that it, if they hadn't been euthanized, they would have died from the cancer. So I right. think you're absolutely right. Yeah, they, they're not dying from atherosclerotic. Right. They, when you look at their arteries, right. they're not littered with plaques the way ours are. At least the commonly used inbred mouse strains. That yep. is definitely true for. There are, you know, this is maybe getting in the weeds a little bit, but there are certainly mouse strains that have been designed either transgenically or through selection to 
develop other pathologies that will shorten their lifespan. But if you let a, a typical mouse strain in the lab live out its natural life, it will have a very high tumor burden at the end of life. And most likely, you know, I, I guess I should know this. I don't know exactly. I'm guessing 80% yeah, of the animals- Yeah, I think it's about 75, 80% yeah, of them. Would, would die from cancer. Yeah. So it's a, it's different from yep. humans in that way. And I actually think this is, you know, this is a legitimate- um, criticism to some extent of the caloric, the interpretation of the caloric restriction literature that is, could it be the case that really what caloric restriction is doing is preventing cancer? And that's why you see these big increases in lifespan. And I think that's really difficult to definitively answer one way or the other. What I would say is, you know, mice do develop functional declines in every tissue and organ as they age, very much like people do. So, you know, a person may die from cardiovascular disease, but at the same time, if they're in their 80s, their kidney isn't functioning as well, their heart isn't functioning as well, their brain probably isn't functioning as well. That's right. So mice show all of those same declines in function with age, and caloric restriction seems to delay, delay or outright declines. prevent those declines as well. 